Right, I've done everything I need to do there. Everybody's back home. Tea's being put on, but I'm gonna go out for a small little hike up through the lanes, hence the fluorescent jacket because traffic. So a lot of this walk will be on lanes, but um, depending on wind conditions, I'll take you along to show you uh, what a little walk where I live looks like. Yeah, coming out of my village, um, you hit a hill and uh, this will give me spectacular views over all the high ground. There'll be a lot of wind up there because there's an easterly wind, but I'll just let you see that when we get to the top. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, rabbit hole damage to this hedge and it's very early at the moment and I should suspect we're going to see a lot of rabbits this year. Yeah, this is the hill that leads up to the high ground before you descend into the valley. There's a couple of people ahead of me, I don't know, 600 metres ahead of me. They'll reach the top because they're dog walking and then they'll turn around and I'll pass them. They won't descend into the valley because obviously you start reaching that point where you actually are got to be or you will be heading somewhere else rather than just going for a little dog walk. And most people just want to take the dog for a walk and then uh, turn around and come back home. Yeah, this is the, uh, well, the highest point before I start descending. And you can see the moors in the distance. We're overlooking another um, valley that then drops down to the river systems at the base of the moors. But as you can see, I've got a fantastic view all the way around. And if I was to go into a field behind me, I'd get 360 degrees um, vantage point to look. But as it is, I am where I am and I'm gonna keep going so I descend down into the valley so I can then continue my way. This here is the result of deers coming over the hedge. There's a lot of woodland around here or forestry and they come down here and they've obviously broke the uh, hedge down and they then are making their way across here and heading out over there. Now what they're doing by doing that is making their way to good grazing ground before dropping down into the woods behind this rise in the hill. What you have there on the road is because we're so high and the air here is completely, completely clear of any pollution, you have lichen and it is actually growing on the road itself. And because this sees very little traffic, it doesn't get wore away. Now, lichen is always an indicator of good quality air. Now that's a bit of the wood block that you can see those deers are making their way down to. If you could see past this hedgerow, that bit that you can see would join a massive forestry and that's where the deers are heading down to and they do a circular they go down there come back around to the forestry behind me and it seems to be kind of like a loop that they do and they obviously utilize this uh this field systems for grazing as well but in effect we do have a large deer population here and it's not uncommon to see them on the lanes and the roads now I'm making my way descending down into this particular valley and I've left everybody behind. Like I said, they've, they've done that stretch to the top of the hill from the village with their dogs, a nice little Sunday walk, but there is no real sense of purpose in going further because you really do need to be heading somewhere if you're doing this. I know where I'm going and I've got a loop in mind that I'm gonna do, but that isn't something that somebody out for just a little walk would do. What I'm doing here just borders on what you would then classify as a hike. But I'm out, I'm enjoying this weather, and uh, I'm just trying to stay out of the wind to be honest with you, because it is quite bitter. Right, I've just reached the point where I'm heading down to the river. Um, it's quite a nice little walk down here. I'm trying to push hard so I'm bouncing around a bit for a simple reason, light. And I would like to get the majority of this done with a degree of light. But yeah, it's uh, on the last legs and I'm reaching 
the far corner of the woodland that I'm going to be walking through. And here it is and it attaches to that piece of woodland I showed you earlier. But I shan't be going up into that woodland now because I'm trying to make some progress. Hence why my phone is uh, jumping all over the spot as I'm marching down this hill. I'm not actually walking at a steady pace. I am actually pushing hard here now. This bit of forestry is owned by the Duchy of Cornwall. It is private land in essence, but there are paths and tracks that you do have an existing right of way to walk. Um, that being said, if there's any activities like shooting or forestry management or anything like that, uh, those rights away cease to uh, be in existence because of the management of the land. Nice tranquil little ford with a walkway across the top. Very pleasing. And there is something about water, just a little trickling stream like this, which it does actually make you feel quite calm and relaxed. Right, if I've reached the bottom of this particular um, valley, and there is what would have been a mill in a former life, but it is now a private residence and indeed a very nice one. And the river itself, if I come up to uh, this point, you can see isn't in full flood, but it does have a lot of water moving through it. A lot of water there, like I said, moving through. And I think that's a jay screaming in the background. Very attractive bird, but uh, they do make a lot of noise if they feel they're threatened or they see a threat, i.e. probably me. I'm going to follow my uh, way up through the bit of road here and there will be a gate system I can go in to make my way to a public footpath. And that is where I need to be heading, following that sign saying public footpath. Now I've got to negotiate the gate lock, open the gate, we're following that sign. I'm now on the public footpath and this is off road this bit here and I now have the challenge of some very steep hills. I've just seen rabbits scattering everywhere just a minute ago. Obviously it's that time of day they will be looking to get out using the uh, diminishing light as cover from predators. Outstanding views. And we've just come down through that cleft in the valley, down a road system, along here, and we've tracked up here. But you can see the sun beginning to go down behind the horizon and twilight will be on us soon. Looking out of the uh, tree line there, you can easily see the tracks the rabbits have been making. As they head out into, should we say, better grazing. I am out of breath because we are moving up a serious gradient here and I'm not as fit as I used to be. This footpath is reasonably easy to follow and it has a nice well-defined gateway there, not hidden and not overgrown. And when that's the case, there really isn't much reason or excuse to be trampsing everywhere all over a farmer's field. Like I said, if you're stuck and you're trying to find 
your gateways and that because they're not clearly defined. That's one thing. And I'm pretty sure any reasonable landlord owner would accept that with an apology. Saying you're lost and you're trying to find your way. They would probably put you on your way in the right direction and off you go. But if it's clearly defined and they can easily see you're just wandering willy nilly, it might be a little bit harder for you to justify being somewhere you shouldn't be. That being said, local knowledge allows people to use this route here and it is quite openly used by locals with the landowner's knowledge. But the public footpath is through this gateway here and it is still clearly visible and it wouldn't take too much to find it as there is a sign over there. I have used that one and I will use that one because obviously it's accepted that locals use it. But the actual path, if I get closer, as you can see, is quite evidently there. And you can see the arrow pointing there. Both these converge at the same point over there. This field here is used for crops and agricultural means like, you know, for, well, it's used, shall we say, primarily for cereal crops and things like that. And that's the reason I believe the landowner thought, rather than people traipsing over this side, it's easier to let them use this bit of dead ground here and come down there. Which makes logical thinking, but like I said, the path, if I was to be, shall we say, a bit of a job's worth, is from there to there, the other side the fence running up through. There is sheep in this uh, bit of dead ground, and that is to help manage it. One of my trips through here last summer, the grass was almost bum deep. So looking at this, it looks like they've done a pretty good job natural management of the land you know that's where it's at really and that's probably the future of um, agricultural um, methods and means if you ever wondered what these uh, little bits of nondescript hedging are and you think they wouldn't stop much well if you were to casually just follow it you would end up with a system like that. Now, I would think most people by now would have twigged on to what that is. It's an electric fence. Touch that, which I don't advise for safety reasons, and I don't advise you to do it for just your personal well-being. You're gonna get a fair belt of electric shock. Stay away and don't touch, and definitely don't mess with. So following this path, I've now made my way to another sty that goes through a little thicket. The electric fence is tied to the corner, but there still is no reason for me to be alarmed because I do not have to touch it at this point. I can just make my way safely over the top. This is quite a nice uh, little area, kind of like a little hideaway. And from here, I'll just bring you around, you can see a man-made lake. And I can only guess that's there for private fishing. This on the other hand, to cross this little stream, I would suggest it's been here for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. As this would have been a path for people going to work, church, social occasions, to the pub, and every manner of uh, human activity for hundreds of years. So, where is in stark contrast, that is man-made for a private use. 
this would have been made for the general good of the ordinary working folk and like I said everybody would have used it and here it is and it looks like it's probably been here for a little while because it looks like there is um, some well-established uh, trees there growing not mature young ones but it would suggest that it's probably been there in existence of I would say 15 years 10 15 years anyway I'm now following the arrows and it's taking me up a track and I can clearly see in the distance farm buildings so I know this track is going to take me through a farm complex now just looking at that and thinking about it it is perfectly normal to suggest that this farm would have used this track to get down to that mill that we've just passed in days gone by and that would have been the thoroughfare from farm to mill that drainage system is evidence of all the water that we've just had recently making its way down there across the track and heading back down to that little lake that we saw this looks like a uh, natural spring I can see water coming out from the bottom there and it's probably a natural drainage point in the rocks in the field above it and years ago it would have had a collection point there for the water so the farm animals could have drunk from it now coming up into the farm complex and you can see the storm damage there you go and you can see the aftermath of the cleanup and in the distance you can see water coming out of the pipe in the field that's obviously runoff as well I'm now leaving that farm complex I didn't video in there because it's somebody's private dwelling but I'm now coming up to the road and I've got to make a decision I either head down that way or head up the road that way will get me home quicker but that way has a more interesting route an historical route but I don't have light on my side and that's going to be my route so you may be wondering why I'm wearing a non-fashionable high-vis jacket when I'm out and about instead of one of those modern hiking jackets I do have one which I do use if I'm off-road for a majority of my um, hiking or walking but as you can see over my shoulder a little bit of this or the majority of this has been on lanes and not footpaths although I've just come off a footpath give the car driver or vehicle driver a chance to see you it saves you being injured and it saves everybody's day being ruined that's all I can say um, yeah I would implore people to think safety for on these lanes I wouldn't have wore one years ago but there's a lot more people on the road these days and in my view a lot more questionable driving standards but that's just probably an old man talking but you know neither, neither way you know just give yourself a chance to be seen if you're on lanes like what I got behind me um, it's best all way around some nice uh, flowers hiding away a purple and white one underneath this uh, fir tree here we got daffodils out snowdrops and pansies these look like the miniature variety of daffodils that you get now so I can only guess that uh, they've been planted there they're not uh, wild I'm not going to be home before dark but I'll give it a good uh, try that wind has picked up as I'm coming over the rise now and it really is feeling bitter you can see by the colour of the sky 
it's got that steely colour of a, of a easterly wind with it and it's bringing a bit of bite and no doubt I'll be grateful to get in front of that log burner when I get home. I'm now on some quieter lanes and I'll descend back into a valley and indeed that will be the valley I came from. I've done a complete loop around the top of it and I will now descend down into it. From a village about half a mile away I can hear kids playing, their noise is being carried on the wind and now I'm now on a lane that doesn't see too much traffic and indeed the centre of the uh, track or lane shall I say you can start to see grass is beginning to grow and you've got uh, storm debris um, doesn't look much on the camera but you can gradually see it's getting more as you go down the track yeah when you start getting grass growing in the uh, <laughs> lane you know you're on a road that doesn't see much traffic and to be honest with you this is how I like it but you still have to have your wits about you because uh, some uh, vehicle could come hurtling around a corner so don't ever drop your guard like I said you can clearly see now that I have several inches of mud and debris in the center of the road spilling into the uh, tire tracks so you would be uh, well advised to if you're driving on this just be aware that it could be a skid hazard but like I said, light is fading and I'm pushing hard, really pushing hard now. I've just seen a gentleman and he had a little chat with him and he just confirmed I'll be lucky to make it home before light disappears. But that's kind of a challenge thrown down and I'm going to uh, accept it. You can just see the moors in the distance and indeed light is going really fast now. But this field, there's uh, round bales in, and they've been here for, I, I couldn't even begin to guess, years I would say. And they're just sat here rotting away. I've no idea what the reason for this is. Um, whether the landowner just decided that they weren't worth financially retrieving, or whether there's been a family or business catastrophe that's led them just to sit here and rot I don't know but um, I've always wondered that because um, in reality that's a lot of money's worth of bales there just sitting for nothing to ever happen to them and I you know without being an expert in these uh, matters I would say they're of no use to livestock anymore That's a curious little uh, feature on, shall I say, a very, very um, usual route that I take. And indeed, my two boys call it the haunted house. I'll show you why. I do know it is actually um, owned by um, a family, but uh, or a family name that I've been given that owns it. I don't know why it's remained in its situation as it is to go dilapidated. I have been told that it's living memory a family have lived in it and uh, it seems a shame uh, there's got to be a reason why it's being left to go the way it is but indeed you know you don't see many properties like this in this state they're usually bought up very quickly particularly down here and converted into some sort of dwelling usually of a holiday let or or shall we say this would probably go because it seems to have a bit of land with it it would be of uh, the top end of a market but in any case in its present state my kids call it the haunted house I'll just let you have a look so here it is it's got uh, roadside frontage holes in the roof the chimney uh, stack has lost its render all the woodwork is gone Indeed, the side building, that's uh, got no um, woodwork left on it. Like I say the roof has come in. And indeed, you can look right down inside to the property. 
over here you can see it's totally overgrown and indeed that would be the bedrooms it's boarded up there and there's no more view it's covered in ivy and indeed the other um, part of the house looks like it's been totally taken over and is collapsing but yeah this is what my kids call the haunted house and we have a little bit of fun with them over this and indeed through that window from this direction you can see that uh, there is a hole in the roof it is a shame this would have made or was a lovely family home i would have suspected for the uh, family that lived in it so i've made my way down to this junction here that will be taking me home and that heads to another village but this land looking down through this gate here I actually did chat to an elderly gentleman who owns all this and there is a public footpath in the next field over that goes down to another path through a woodland and out to a road and what was interesting was the story he actually did tell me yeah, so while walking that footpath I've just shown you that goes down over into another valley, um, I met an elderly gentleman well into his 80s. And he, you know, because I'd stopped and I was having a cup of tea and just getting myself together, you know, casually approached me and, you know, with caution, I suppose, you'll be an elderly gentleman, asked me what I was up to and everything like that. And I told him. I just hiked down the path, a footpath, and I was just having a rest and, you know, made pleasantries with the gentleman. And he gradually started talking to me. And that was when I was talking to him that he told me that this had been in his family for many, many years. Now, he's gone 80, like I said, and he was talking about his early father's years. And indeed, what I considered scrub ground and totally overgrown his father grew strawberries and these strawberries would be sent all over the country and indeed a vast majority to London and this is back in the day when you know motor vehicles were the exception not the rule and I never did get to ask him how those strawberries actually ended up at London but it was a fascinating story talking to him about um, a fruit crop which I've always associated with uh, modern times but no I was wrong they were grown down here on a hillside that is now totally totally overgrown and unworkable but in a previous life it produced strawberries for the people of London I shan't be doing any more filming because I'm going to make my way down to that old mill you've seen and then back up through the road system over the top of the hill and back down to my village and I'll just close this here for the hike because there's no value in you seeing me with very shaky dark footage now I shall close this when I get home just to have a little chat with you and uh, before then I'm going to now slog the last couple of miles uh, on these lanes before it gets dark and I'll speak to you when I get home if this does come out you will see that i really am stomping hard now um it's quite a gradient and there's a lot of water running down this road but i really am determined to get home you can hear the birds singing their last songs before nightfall um but yeah i'll catch you later actually <laughs> i just had to take a film of this because it is feeling quite magical at the moment like I said, last bits of sun going down, coming over the river, the bridge. See it winding all the way over through the valley. And indeed, watching this river make its way down through the woodlands now. It is totally magical. Like I said, I'm back pretty much where I was when I started when I made my way down over the um, valley from my place but yeah 
I now have the hard slog uphill. Just pushing through the ford. Just through the clouds, you can see the very faint uh, sign of the moon, treetops. I got around this corner and push on. This is the last bits of light going over the moors. I don't know how this is going to come out, but I've got a few hundred yards before I broach the top of the hill and descend down into my village. But this is the very last drags of light disappearing over the uh, horizon of the high ground of the moors. Totally stunning walk this evening, and I really hope you enjoyed coming along with me. Just seeing what a uh, Cornish uh, country walk is. Right, I'm back home, and as you can see, the cats have come in for the night. He's gone to sleep on the straw bale, and the other one is, if you can see, curled up in there. And I'll just show you how dark it is. I've got the outside light on. It's end of the day and I'm in by the fire. I've got a cup of tea. I should probably get a uh, gin and uh, lemonade and have that in a moment. And then I should toodle off to bed. So that was um, just another typical day. And I hope you saw that, enjoyed that. And indeed, like, you know, we did the community speed program where the community got together to make some signs to try and slow traffic down in the village you know whether that works or not remains to be seen I've done a hike really thoroughly enjoyed that done a few things this morning around uh, the workshop and the garden the kids have had a little play so all in all it's been a reasonably successful day so yeah this is Andy from Folklore Hiking Sticks I'm going to call it a day Stay safe, uh, all the best.